to be loving and respectful to Cody. I want to say yes, but I just don't know how this works exactly. It's weird. I feel like it's disrespectful. It feels disrespectful to be happy with Cody. That they haven't mean. shared it with me off camera. Do you need to hear that yeah. from them yes. to be able to be purely happy yes. with Cody? Yes. I need it off camera to my face. Hey friends, it's Katie from Without a Crystal Ball. Welcome back to my channel. It is Tuesday, December 19th, 2023. I hope everyone's having a wonderful day. I was just watching a podcast called Ju Juicy Scoop with Heather, Heather McDonald. And I actually was watching it because Heather messaged me last night to let me know that she had Christine Brown on her podcast, which was airing today. And she said that she would love me to watch the podcast. So I did. And the interview was amazing. She uh, dove into topics with Christine that went a little bit deeper than some of the conversations Christine has had in interviews. And it was much more of a dialogue versus a question and then Christine responding and then a question and people responding. And well, it's a very, it's a, it's a pretty long podcast, so I certainly don't want to steal all of the thunder for Heather. I will certainly put a link in the bio so that you can check out her full interview with Christine. But I wanted to talk to you guys about a few things that Christine brought up in this podcast uh, based on questions and a conversation she and Heather were having related to Robin. Because on the tell-all, right? Robin made this comment about how she wanted a face-to-face -face conversation with her sister wives because she felt like they had not told her that it was okay to be happy with Cody and that she needed them to tell her to her face that she could be happy with Cody. Naturally, this demand by Robin was not met well with fans and viewers alike as they believed that Robin was acting rather entitled to want a face-to-face -face conversation with women that had already been driven away from the family, wh whether it was through Cody basically alienating them and abandoning them, or it was through games that Robin was playing with them, or just the fact that Robin was monopolizing Cody's time. Regardless, people just did not resonate with this demand. Most of you in my comments did not resonate with this demand by Robin. Christine responded to that demand, but Christine also gave insight into how the family really changed once Robin came into the family. And this was something she hasn't said in any other interviews. So kudos to Heather for getting her to open up in this way. And she mentioned that once Robin joined the family, Robin started talking about how she and Cody were a couple. When Robin first came into the into the family, she started talking about. It. She goes, "Cause you guys are a couple and blah blah blah." I'm like, "What do you mean a couple?" And she goes, "Well, you guys are all couples." And I said, "No, we're not couples." And and she goes, "Well, no, Cody and I." Because she was saying that her and Cody were a couple and stuff. I'm like, "There's no couples in our family. I don't know what you mean." And she goes, "Well, you and Cody are a couple." I'm like, "No, we're not. We're not a couple. That's not what it is. You're a fan. We're a family." So right off the right out of the gate, when Robin joins this family, she doesn't understand that in plural marriages, there's not individual relationships, but rather the family was functioning as a family. Christine spoke in length with Heather about when they were living in Lehigh, that it wasn't like Cody had individual marriages. I mean, he did, but he was everywhere all of the time when they lived in that house and she said it was really crowded she said her kids didn't love it because of how crowded it was and that cody was never really any one place i mean he would certainly go sleep in a bedroom with one of them each night but she said it never felt like a relationship until they actually left lehigh and lived in a house without everyone else around and then they could be a couple that frame of reference by robin is how she entered the family so she entered this family like 
Cody and I are a couple. You and Cody are a couple. Paul and Cody are a couple. And Mary and Cody are a couple. Well, you can't have four couples with one man. So it's almost as though when she entered this relationship and this family, she never looked at it as a family. She looked at it as her and Cody are a couple. I think that in and of itself cracked the family's structure. But it sounds like there was a lot that happened beyond that that cracked the family structure. In that, she talked more in depth about her in Las Vegas, that he would come to her house every third night because at the, by that time, Cody and Mary had stopped uh, having overnight visits together. And she said that even on like a Saturday night, a Saturday, after spending all day over at Robin's house, he would then show up at her house at six o'clock in the evening and her kids would be missing out on time with their dad during the day. So rather than spending time with his kids with Christine during the day, he's over at Robin's house spending time with her kids and her during the day and then spending a couple hours with Christine and her kids that night. So they weren't getting equal amounts of time and Cody was really being in a couple relationship with Robin. And I started to think about this a lot because I was thinking about how Cody did come from the world of monogamy as a child, but then his parents go into plural marriage. And he, as an adult, has never really experienced monogamy. And so for him, I'm thinking, okay, so Robin comes into this. She's coming from the world of monogamy. She's spent eight years in a marriage. She's just gotten divorced. And now she's coming into this situation as a divorcee. And she's bringing in her monogamous views. And I do wonder how much that influenced him because he was so sheltered in that cult that maybe he was like, oh, I can see an out now. But he didn't want to tell them that part. She talked about how when they were in Las Vegas, things became more and more separate. And then Cody decides he wants to move to Vegas. She still to this day does not know why he wants to move. He wanted to move there. She really liked living in Las Vegas, but she said that Cody started saying that Las Vegas wasn't safe for the kids. She says once he proposes the one house, she doesn't want to do that because she felt like she would be trapped in a home where Cody would never come over because he would always be over at Robin's and then he would just stop by at her house. So she felt she would see him even less than she was already seeing him in Vegas because again, while in Vegas, he's only stopping by in the evening, sleeping and leaving and going back to Robin's. Once they get into Flagstaff, things are so separated. And she talked about how when Isabel needed the surgery, he came to Isabel and he said to her, like, I can't be at your surgery because I can't leave my family. And Christine said that Isabel came to her and said, well, I thought I was his family. So what does he mean that he can't leave his family? And so Christine explained that, that was sort of her aha moment. Like, you're not thinking of me as your family. You're not thinking of our kids as your family. We're not your family. I can't be married to a guy who doesn't respect us as his family and thinks of somebody else as his family. If he thinks that someone else is his family, why is he still married to me? Why is he still pretending that polygamy works if he can't leave his family to be with his daughter? And I just didn't understand that. It was only four. So it was a total of like three and a half weeks that we were gone. You Did know. you hear her slip of the tongue? She's usually very, very, very guarded in her interviews and she will not disclose details that might not be beneficial for the show. And in there she said, why is he still pretending that polygamy works if it's not working? And I thought, but they were pretending for a very long time that it worked on the show because if Christine is, if what Christine is saying is accurate, when they get to Vegas, it's 2011 and Cody basically abandons everyone and he's with Robin all the time. So it's been 12 years that Cody has had no real contact and he's been over at their houses at night and it's been years now that Cody and Robin have been together all the time. And she's like, he just, he, why is he pretending? And I agree with her. Why would she 
want to stay with someone that doesn't view her as a family or her kids as a family. But it does appear that for a long time while the show was airing, there was a lot of pretending going on because they had a lot of people that wanted them to push out this idea that plural marriage was working. And Christine talked in the beginning of this episode about how she worked in advocacy and was very pro plural marriage and pro and she got the show through her work with that group. And so pretending that it worked was good for business. That's at least how I took it. And I'm not trying to say that Christine is wrong for saying that. It's just she typically wouldn't say something like that. Just my two cents. There was more about how situations changed and, and the dynamic in their marriage that are continued with this. And I remember watching me going, um, I don't think she wanted to be a sister wife. And I would say at the beginning, I'm sure she did. And I think she had this ideal and situation that she wanted. And I'm sure she wanted to be a sister wife. And I'm sure she wanted the whole family. But I don't know if she knew how to go about it. You can't just know that you put all these expectations on your husband, that he has to be around. And he's got to help with the kids and stuff. And this thing, I'm making so many assumptions, Heather, because I couldn't monopolize Cody. I didn't want to. He was a lot of work, by the way. And I'm sure part of her is like, holy, what am I going to do with him full time? I'm sure that's part of it. Um, or maybe it's not. So Robin comes into this marriage and she's saying, Cody and I are a couple. Cody has three other women in his lives. He's got 13 kids. And on top of that, for her to be happy, for Robin to be happy, she puts demands on Cody that he has to be home. He has to help with the kids. He has to be a partner in their relationship. He has to be a couple with her. And Cody becomes a husband to Robin and then just a dude to all these other women. When she entered the family, she I don't think she wanted to be in plural marriage. I think maybe she had bubbly ideas and Christine even says that maybe she did want it, but she didn't know how to do it or I don't know, but putting demands on someone that already has those many demands. And listen, if you're in a marriage with someone and you want a husband that's around and that is active with the kids, I can't disagree with you. Children need a father in their lives. Children need dads that are active. Wives and husbands should share responsibilities in the home. But that's not what Robin signed up with when she came into a family that already had all of these kids and all of these children. She signed up to share him, but she didn't want to share him. At least that's from what I'm seeing. And she still wanted to be a couple with him, but didn't, but wanted to be in plural marriage. I don't, I don't think Robin wanted those plural marriage. And I don't think it matches what Christine says her experience was before versus once Robin comes in. Be happy and be okay. I found out last night that she wants me to go up to her verbally and say, you can have him. And I'm like, girl, that's never going to happen. I don't know what you're talking like about. Like off camera. I'm like, so what? You've said it here to the she world. She wants us to go it's say to her off camera, your majesty, you may have him now. No, it's never going to happen. Yeah. What I thought was- What becomes very clear is that Throughout the podcast, as they're talking more and more about how Robin and really Robin's demands of Cody and Robin's demands in her relationship with Cody further alienated Cody from everyone else. And, and maybe Cody was happy just being with Robin regardless. It doesn't matter. He had other responsibilities. Even once she leaves, Robin still doesn't want to accept that she's left. And Christine points out that she finds out through the tell all that Cody that me, Robin wants her to go to her and give her her permission or get say, your majesty, you can have Cody now. And I think a lot of the imbalance here is that Robin was playing this power of I'm the wife that needs the most. I'm the wife that is the most important. I'm the wife that is the top. I'm the wife that's the legal wife. And now she wants these minions to come to her and say now you can go on your way and be happy and obviously Christine says that's never going to happen and I'm never going to do that but another point that gets brought up is that Christine says that she was never told about this covenant that Robin and Cody had until she was in Vegas and it wasn't even something that he directly said 
to her about Cody said to Christine about his covenant with Robin, but that covenant that she can walk in. And if Robin says, if you're never in love with me, you can leave. And I need to know that you'll let me go. Heather makes the point that you don't generally walk into a marriage with that agreement because you walk into a marriage with confidence that it's going to work out and that you love this person. So she felt like Heather felt like she was coming into a situation where Robin felt insecure. Christine said she was never told about this, but then while in Vegas, suddenly after he makes this agreement with Robin, Cody approaches her and tells her, listen, if you don't want to be here, you can go, which was never in their conversations ever. They never had that discussion. That was never an agreement she and Cody had. So again, it was another change to their marriages, to their family. And this is what Christine said. I remember exactly where it was because it shocked me so bad. We were standing in my bathroom. We had these huge bathrooms in Vegas. It was beautiful. He was standing in the closet and he goes, I want you to know if you ever want to leave, I don't want it to be a fight. I don't want us to fight. I want you to be able to leave peacefully. And I'm all, I mean, at that point, our marriage was pretty rocky. So I was furious. And I'm like, so we're not worth fighting for. You wouldn't want to be like, girl, we can make this work. Nothing like that. You would just be like, go, you can go ahead and leave. You can leave anytime. If you want to leave, I'll make it peaceful for you. You know, and we're worth fighting for. No, I was furious. And then now I'm like, oh, so I, I don't know. The conversations, all of the agreements, they made agreements. That became a word that was used a lot when Robin started coming into the family. It was the word agreements. They made agreements like he would promise to do this if she did this and promise to do this. And it was really a lot of negotiations that they had. And that must have been one of their negotiations. And I'm like, well, once you stopped being in love with me, I would have loved to have been let go. You this know, is, again, I loved what she said here about how she's in the closet and he's like, if you want to go, you can go. I'll be peaceful. She's shocked. They're in a rough spot. He doesn't want to work it out. And he's telling her, if you want to leave, you can go and it'll be peaceful. And she says, no, she's going to stay. But then when she does leave, he has a hissy fit, right? He throws a temper tantrum. And even in this tell-all, he's like, I didn't love her, but I didn't want her to go. But if Robin wants to go... Or if he doesn't love Robin, he'll let her go, according to the agreement that they made. But he wasn't in love with Mary, he wasn't in love with Christine, and he wouldn't let either one of them go. He just sort of emotionally abandoned Mary and neglected her, but figured she'd stick around for whatever the payday he gets out of it. But with Christine he just probably never thought she would leave because of her upbringing in this culture and being raised in this cult. And he probably assumed she would just always stay. So I'm like sitting here thinking if Cody made this agreement with Robin, but he didn't honor it with anyone else, it very well feels like rules for me, not for thee, which is again, Robin acting like she has an entitlement and she has more stature and she has more importance. She has this air of arrogance. I think that's what fans saw from the very beginning when she had all of these different, you know, demands of him. I need him for my kids. I need every fourth night, even though we're not married. I need him to help me pick out the dress. I need an 11 day honeymoon. I need, I need, I need, I want, I want, I want. I give, I give nothing right? They start, they start talking about why Robin is so upset about this whole thing falling apart. And Christine gives a very, very, very good thought about why she thinks that Robin is upset. And it has nothing to do with Robin caring about them, but rather Robin not having the control. I think she must be very, very, very sad to see everything just kind of crumble around her and realize that she's powerless to hold it all together. She doesn't have what it takes to hold it all together. She doesn't. And I think that she just must feel like she's losing such a thing that could have been so beautiful. And I went through that grieving process five years ago. I saw that there's nothing that I could do to hold everything together. And even though I was grasping and grasping, and I remember thinking if I did this and this and this and this and this, then our family would be okay and it would be okay. And it was okay for a little bit longer again. And then um, I just realized I was the only one putting in effort 
and doing things together. I, that's how I felt. I'm sure everybody feels the same, you know, but I think that it's just got to be hard to be in her shoes and realize that she doesn't have the power to hold the family together. And I don't know. I don't and talk to her. I honestly don't. The sense that I get from this entire interview, and I'm going to link it again in the description box below, is that when it comes to Robin and Cody, specifically when it comes to Cody, I believe he made her think that she had a lot more power than she did, that she could influence him to do whatever he wanted. But with Cody comes that narcissism and that lack of, and that inability to actually listen to anyone and his grandiosity where he doesn't believe that anyone else knows better than him. And he got all of these outs from Robin. He, she's the one that plants the idea that if you don't love someone, they can leave. She's the one that plants these ideas about Cody needing to be around all the time and all of these demands that she places on him. She's the one that plants all of these ideas in him. He gravitates to her as a result. And ultimately, those demands that she's placed on him are what causes the alienation from these other women. But she somehow also wants them to stay because of her delusions of wanting this plural family that she never had. So then she wants to do a 360 and be like, no, wait, wait, wait. Now you need to go fix it. Now you need to go spend time with them. Now you need to go be there. Now you need to go do this. Thinking that because she had control of him on that side, that she would have control with him on the, uh, on the flip. So she, I could control Cody and his time this way. Now I can control him to go that way to go back and fix things. But Cody didn't, by then Cody didn't want to fix anything. And she learned the hard way that she's not the one that has the control. She's actually not the one that has the power. She's actually not the one that gets to decide what Cody's going to do. Cody will do what he wants because he is a raging narcissist and he is completely sexist. He is a misogynist and he will never let a woman have power or control over what he does. He will have the final say regardless if it's Robin, Christine, Mary, or Janelle. And I would venture to say that even though Robin placed different rules on Cody, that at times with each one of these women, he likely had a dynamic with them similar in that he had a connection to one woman more than the other. And as a result of that, was doing more for one woman versus the other. But the, the benefit for polygamy for a man is that when one thing is bad with one, you can just go to the one that's easier. You don't have to work anything out. And so for a long time, he had that out with Robin. He could just go to Robin's because he didn't have to think about all of the drama. So really what I took away from this whole interview, and again, you can get the whole interview below. And I'm so, so glad that Heather uh, let me know about this interview. I, I might not have seen it otherwise, but I absolutely love her podcast. Absolutely love Heather. She does a really great job in this. I think that you'll see a side of Christine that is totally different. And I think that the further and further and further she gets away from polygamy, the more and more and more she's seeing the reality. And I think the reality of the real world and that Cody's life and the way that he lives isn't normal and the way that Robin lives in her life isn't normal. And that now Robin and Cody really are stuck with each other, but Robin still can't be happy. And I don't know. He is a lot. Christine said he's a lot to deal with. He's overwhelming. And maybe that's why Robin is so sad. Maybe Robin is so sad because she's lost control, but Christine is not going to tell Robin that she deserves, she can be happy and that she can have him because she's already gone. So tell me what your thoughts are about all of this in the comments below. Bye guys.